Well, welcome to River Point and West End Church. We are so glad that you're here. I want to say hello to Jerome and his family who are visiting at Mo City for the very first time. And anybody that's watching online last service, we had somebody watching from Nashville. We're national people, just in case you didn't know. Maybe international. There might be somebody watching from, from Mexico on vacation today. And we're just glad that you're you're watching wherever wherever you're doing it from. We've been in a series called Don't lose heart because the reality is, is we all can kind of go through some things and experience some setbacks that can cause us to lose heart. So we've been looking um, at a book in the Bible that I believe that we can find a lot of encouragement from. Uh, When I talk to people uh, who are Christians, even people that aren't Christians, oh, I keep hearing some of the same words that keep continuously coming to the surface. And the first word is this, it's pressure, pressure. Pressure to do it all. Most of us don't pause long enough to define what all is, but when you do and you write out the list of all of the things we're expected to be in 2021, it's a tall order. Especially when you're trying to be a super husband, a super dad, a super leader, a super executive, and a super teacher. By the way, shout out to all the teachers. Congratulations, you guys are amazing. We did not know how amazing you were until we had to be the teacher, okay? Now we're like, oh God, where are they at? Can, can, do, do they take tips, okay? Like, can we, can we figure out a way to, to, to thank the teachers even more? But I mean, just think about the tall order that you and I have, have experienced over the last 365 days. I mean, it's just, the only thing that we're supposed to be really is superhuman, but somehow, We have this proverbial group of people who we feel like are watching us at all times and we have to make sure that we're living up to their standards. Like you got cameras in your house. You might actually have cameras in your house, but they're not watching those cameras. And on some level, we have to look in the mirror and ask ourselves, who's making us do all this stuff? Ladies and gentlemen, I I desire to be a super dad. I don't know where that came from. I could just be a regular dad, but for some reason, I feel like I need to have some superpowers. I got this bright idea the other day when my son started playing soccer. Ryan, you should be the soccer coach because that's what a super dad would do. No, that's super stupid, okay? That's what that is, okay? Like, that's gonna ruin our relationship forever, okay? Like, like why in the world, like, why do we feel this pressure to be all things to all people, and you know what it does to us. It leaves us with a lot of exhaustion. I mean, I can't tell you how many coffees, I can't tell you how many Zooms, how many Microsoft Teams meetings I've had, and this word continuously comes up. And I just have to wonder if there's anybody in the building, if there's anybody watching that just feels like they just can't overcome. You just feel like you, you... I don't know, maybe you're supposed to come here today and I was supposed to give you a message that tells you, you got this, you could do it. What if you can't? I mean, what if we just got real for a weekend and just went, man, I, I don't know. I don't know that we're supposed to do it all. But I do believe that we can find strength. And I think we're gonna find strength in today's message that's found in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. It's written by the Apostle Paul. He wrote a couple of letters to the church in Corinth. Uh, We've got two of them in scripture. Apparently the first letter didn't go over too well based off of the comments that we see the Apostle Paul making in 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians has a much different tone than 1 Corinthians. Uh, For us parents, you know, we've got multiple voices when we're talking to our children. We've got playful voice, you know, all of us can talk in like that five-year-old voice. Hey, buddy. We don't talk like that to each other, right? Like we don't see somebody and I'll be, hey, buddy. We don't do that, okay? Like you've got, hey, you've got like the child-like voice. And then you have that authoritative, like I'm about to discipline you voice. You know what I'm saying? Like when your mom call you by your middle name, you know, my middle name is Paul. When my mom says, Ryan Paul, you in trouble, okay? That's the tone that the apostle. Apostle Paul has in 2 Corinthians. It's very much this tone of, should I show up with a whip? Like, how do you you want to have this conversation? Because there were some altercations happening there. And so chapters 1 through 7 is the Apostle Paul really reconciling with the church in Corinth. Chapters 8 and 9 is really the Apostle Paul encouraging them to be more generous. And then chapters 10 
through 13, where the verses that we're looking at today are found, is really the Apostle Paul challenging his naysayers. There are lots of critics that are going, man, Paul, you don't know, you don't know what you're talking about, man. Why are, you trying to, why are you trying to tell us what to do? There was lots of pushback. And, and, and a, lot of, a lot of Paul's critics were going, you know what? We're better than you. They would use this word boasting a lot. So Paul says, you want to play the boast game? Cool. Let's play the boasting game. And then he, at the beginning of 2 Corinthians chapter 12, the apostle Paul tells us that he was taken up to heaven, whether he doesn't know if it was literal or if he was just given a vision, but nevertheless, he was given revelations by God in that very moment. And he's saying, so here's the deal. If you want to boast, tell me the last time you were taken up to heaven. I mean, he's just shutting it down, okay? And then... He gives us this verse. He says, in light of, of where I was taken up to, so to keep me from becoming conceited because of the surpassing greatness of the revelations, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to harass me, to keep me from becoming conceited. Three times I pleaded with the Lord about this, that it should leave me. Three times. Three times, the Apostle Paul is going to God going, hey, could you uh, get rid of this thing? It's really annoying. Could you just, that, I, I, that, it'd be really great if we could just get rid of this thing three times. The, there's a couple of issues with this. Number one, uh, scholars have debated what they believe the thorn was. I'm not smarter than I look, okay? So I'm not gonna try and prove to you that like I know what the thorn was. I don't and they don't either, okay? But it's interesting to me that it's, it's somewhat out of character for Paul to plead with God to take something away because that's not really Paul's, like that's, that's not his MO. That, that's not how Paul really rolls. And we see that in 2 Corinthians chapter 11 where he, was, where he was trying to argue with some of his naysayers and going, hey, let me, listen, if you want to see my credibility, if you want to know the authority in which I can talk about the grace of God, I'll just show you. And it says this in 2 Corinthians chapter 11. It says, are they servants of Christ? I know I sound like a madman, but I have served him far more. I have worked harder and been put in prison more often, been whipped times without number and faced death again and again. Five different times, the Jewish leaders gave me 39 lashes. Um, it, said, it was said that if you got 40 lashes on your back, he's speaking of, that you would die. He was one lash away from dying. Five times. Jesus got 39 lashes once before he was crucified. Paul's going, hey, I've been through some things. You know, when I read this, the words that I see, church hurt. I wonder how many people under the sound of my voice right now have got some church hurt. You're actually not mad at God. You've got tension with his people. You had somebody say something. You had someone share one of your stories that you told in a small group and they went and gossiped about you. And oh, I can't believe you said that. I can't believe you did that. And, and all of a sudden, that moment has caused your journey with God to be paused. And I think what we learn from the Apostle Paul is that we have to be aware of intertwining our faith in God with our faith in people. And I have to wonder if this weekend isn't an invitation for you to come back to God. I wonder if we've given people way too much power over our faith. If you've experienced church hurt, I wish I could represent every pastor. You don't really want that though. Okay, I like that. That wouldn't be good. But for a moment, can I just apologize for us flawed human beings who maybe tried to present perfection when we really weren't? Maybe we gave some false expectations that none of us could ever meet. What I can tell you about myself and what I can tell you about the people on your right and on your left is we're all a bunch of flawed human beings that step into a room and talk about the goodness of God. That's what I want to invite you back to. That boat. Not the perfection boat. 
though we're, we're all under the goodness of God boat. And I think that's a boat worth returning to. Paul continues with this. He says, three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Don't think drugs, okay? Not like that kind of stone. <laughs> I know you're thinking, I can relate to this. No, 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 not, not, not the way you think. It's different. You're like, I like Paul. You, not, no, I, mean, I don't know. And, and, and even when you think stone, don't, don't think dodgeball, okay? Don't think just somebody's throwing stones. The stoning in this day and age was they would throw you off a cliff and drop stones on you until you died. That's the kind of stoning he survived. Then he says, three times I was shipwrecked. Once I spent a whole night and day adrift at sea, just treading water. I have traveled on many long journeys. I have faced danger from rivers and from robbers. I have faced danger from my own people, the Jews, as well as from Gentiles. I have faced danger in the cities, in the deserts, and on the seas. And I have faced danger from men who claim to be believers but are not. I have worked hard and long, enduring many sleepless nights. I have been hungry and thirsty and have gone without food. I have shivered in the cold without enough clothing to keep me warm. Just in case you thought you were having a rough week, you should read 2 Corinthians chapter 11. He's going, hey, uh, if you want to know where my credibility comes from, where my authority comes from, just read chapter 11. But it's perplexing to me. Do you get what I mean when I say he's not a complainer? He's not a pleader? I mean, he's being very specific in chapter 11, but rather vague. In chapter 12, in fact, I think it's, well, ironic that Paul pleaded with God three times to take away this in chapter 12, but didn't plead with God to take away any of those horrible things in chapter 11. I'm going, Paul, I, I'm not going to tell you how to pray, but bruh, let's look at your, let's look at your sheet, bruh. Like if, if we're going to plead with God, you could have gone, hey, God, 239 last year. Can you leave the other three for, for maybe Peter, James, and John or somebody else? Like, let somebody, like, can we spread out the lashes, please? If we're talking about pleading, but, I mean, I'm just, I, I read chapter 11, and when I get to 12, I go, what could be worse than the homeless, sleepless, cold nights in the desert. And it's like everywhere you went, man, it just wasn't going very well. He didn't even get to the snakes part. Like he, I mean, there's some things that happened to Paul that he didn't even put on there. But by the time we get to 12, it's this thorn. Have you ever had a thorn? Have you ever had a this? Have you ever had something in your life you were praying about? that even your spouse or your best friend wouldn't know about? Have you ever had a this you wouldn't even put in a journal for fear of someone reading it after you die? Have you ever been in a small group of Christians and it says, hey, does anybody have a prayer request? And you're like, me, but I ain't telling you nothing. <laughs> I got an unspoken. Anybody remember the unspoken days? Those were the best days. Oh, I got an unspoken. I got an unspoken. Paul has an unspoken. It's like, hey, it's, a, it, it, it's, 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 it's a thorn. It's between me and God. I had this friend. She was always posting about this tree. She, she would post on Instagram this tree and it have a verse. And she, this is where I talk to God and always about this tree and always about this tree. And I'm like, one time I was like, hey, what are you praying about at this tree? Can I join you in prayer? Like, I'm just, like, I'm just curious. What? She's like, it's none of your business. I said, you put it on in the internet. It's my business now. Sorry for being a caring friend. I apologize. And then one day she stopped posting about the tree. I said, hey, how's your tree? What happened? She said, that's where I got disappointed. I don't go to the tree anymore. And I said to her, could it be that you're in a season of life where God's calling you back to the tree to talk about this. Could it be this weekend 
that God is calling us back to the tree to talk to him about whatever it is, your unspoken. It's between you and God. But what I find people often do is they won't even take it to God anymore because they're so disappointed. Come back to the tree. I love how God responds to the apostle Paul. Three times I pleaded with the Lord about this, that it should leave me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. His grace is sufficient for you. It doesn't sound like a sufficient answer to my pleading for you to take this away. What do you mean your grace is sufficient? Has God ever told you no? Has God ever told you not yet? Has God ever told you to wait? Because let's just be honest, most of our prayer requests are for the here and now. Nobody, how many of us pray for 15 years out? Who says, God, give me a husband in 15 years? Nobody says that. <laughs> God, I really like a raise in 20 years. Nobody says that. Nobody. We, we want everything here and now. And sometimes God's going, you don't actually know what's best for you contrary to popular belief. I do. So when I say yes, when I say no, when I say not yet, when I say maybe, I'll think of, like, that's all up to me because your life is in my hands, or at least it should be. My grace is sufficient for you. Let me give you the Ryan Leak version of my grace is sufficient for you. Hey, Paul, the same grace that got you through chapter 11 is the same grace that will get you through chapter 12. The same grace that met you in the desert, the same grace that met you in the city, the same grace that met you in the river, the same grace that met you in the sea, the same grace that met you at 39 lashes, the same grace that met you when your friends turned their back on you, that same grace is the same grace that will carry you through. You're unspoken. That's how I know my grace is sufficient. And for some of you right now, you're kind of triggered right now because you might be going through bankruptcy. So every time I say chapter 11, that hits a little bit different for you, okay? <laughs> but can I tell you, his grace is sufficient for bankruptcy. His grace is sufficient for some blended family matters. Your, his grace is sufficient for you, leader, for you, dad, for you, mom, for you, student. His grace is sufficient for a pandemic. His grace is sufficient for depression. His grace is sufficient for anxiety. His grace is sufficient for your darkest day. His grace is sufficient. How do we know that? All we got to do is look back a little bit. And what we will see is that his grace got you where you are right now. I got some friends that are fighting cancer, but I keep seeing them. And every time I ask them how they're doing, they're like, I'm still standing. His grace keeps carrying because I keep seeing them standing when doctors saying they shouldn't be. I know people that have jobs that they can't stand. They, 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 they've been hating their job for 10 years. You still got a job. His grace is still carrying you through. So yeah, the grace that I've seen in the past is the same grace that I can see carrying us into the future. And Paul, it's like he got that revelation. Your grace is sufficient. He was human for a moment, but then he was like, wait a minute. Your grace is sufficient for me. And then see, see his language has changed. And he said, therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses. This right here is the most un-American thing we could do. Because who would do that? Who would go on Instagram and start posting about their weaknesses? Who does that? Paul's like, hey, let's go. <laughs> He's like, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For the sake of Christ, then, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. This is really good news. For the Christian, this is really good for the person who isn't. Why? Because this might be the only place in the world that you can go and be on E and it be a good thing so that the power of Christ can rest on your life. If you find yourself in a weak place today, you're actually not in a bad place. What would you do if I told you that if you find yourself in a weak place today, you're actually in the perfect place for God to show up in your life 
Paul, Paul doubled down. He's like, bring it on. All of it. I'll take it. Insults, come on, more of it. I need it. Why? So that I can experience God's perfect power in my life. His grace is sufficient. I've got one, a one point, one point message today for you. And it simply answers this question. How do we find strength in God? How do we find the strength? How do we get that kind of strength? Simple, ladies and gentlemen. Invitation. Invitation. I love what Proverbs verse three says, says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your paths straight. Is there any area in your life where you're leaning on your own understanding? All my crypto homies, you ain't really got that great of an understanding of what it even is, but you're like, man, we got to make a move. Is, is there anything in your life where you're leaning on your own understanding? Are there any relationship decisions that you're making where you're leaning on your own understanding? Are there any career decisions that you're making based off of your own understanding? My friend, please do not make the mistake of waking up on a Monday morning and going, God, help me. And then you grab the steering wheel. As soon as you leave the house, we've mastered that, haven't we? I prayed the prayer, but you never let go. You're better off letting go and just not even saying the prayer. <laughs> Just going, just showing the prayer. God, I, I, I don't got this. And I think one of the greatest spiritual disciplines that you and I will have is fighting the I got this spirit. The I got this mentality. Because the reality is, what if we don't got this? Good. That means you need a God. And it means I need a God. And perhaps when we do this, our prayer changes. Perhaps our prayer this week should go from deliver me from this, save me from this, help me escape from this. Isn't this how most of our prayers start? Like God's our, God's our magic scapegoat. What if, it, what if it went from that to meet me in this? Give me strength in this. Make me better in this. Here's the deal, ladies and gentlemen, I can't guarantee the outcomes of your life. I wish I could. I wish I, wish I had a magic ball where I could just shake it and, and give you all of the answers to all of your questions and predict your preferred outcomes. I can't. But this I know. Wherever you find yourself, there is a God available to you who wants to give you his very sufficient grace to carry you through. Because you would think the Apostle Paul, if the outcomes were always amazing, you would think he would have told us. No, he's like, let me tell you something. I had some really long nights. I faced real danger. I had more near-death experiences than I can count. I stopped counting. But what I discovered is that his grace met me where I was every day single time. And I wonder how many of us just haven't taken the time to invite God's grace to be in our life. That have invited his power to rest on our life. And sometimes, you know what that means? It means not responding to the email just yet. I wonder how many of us have an email right now that we've not responded to, that we feel the temptation like, okay, I'm gonna just... God, I'm gonna sit. I'm going to wait on you. I'm going to wait on your wisdom. I'm going to wait on your perspective. I wonder how many of us are looking at a message that we haven't responded to. Maybe you're single. You're like, should I reply? Yeah, should I not? Should I? I don't know. Are you trying to... But loneliness will make you respond quicker than you should. And so I wonder what it would look like for us to just go, I'm going to move a little bit slower. Maybe I don't got this. Maybe I can't do it all. Maybe I'm not super anything, and that's okay. I'm happy being superhuman. 
And I'm happy being at my lowest point so that the power of Christ can rest on my life. That's my hope. That's my prayer for each and every one of us. God, thank you for River Point West End Church. I pray, God, that your grace would be enough for us, that your amazing grace would be enough for us, God. And if we're looking for proof of that, God, may we just look at our past and figure out how we got where we are. Was it not for your grace and your mercy that carried us through? And I pray, God, that that would be the thing that continues to carry us through into the future. Give us enough grace and enough power so that we're not tempted to try and do things on our own. In Jesus' name I pray. Everybody say it. Amen.